Hi, this is host Derek. Welcome to Talking with Famous People. I'm here with famous people Alex, Vile Skies, and Lorenz Walker. And I proposed a question. It's kind of a famous question. People talk about it at dinner parties and such, which is, if you could travel back in time and hang out and have dinner and spend about six hours with any famous person from history, or I guess they wouldn't be famous people because they've never been on the show, actually. So they'd just be well-known historical figures. But anyway, if you could travel back in time and, and hang out with one such well-known historical figure, um, who would it be and why? And I'll give you my old answer, that used, my used-to-be answer, was always Thomas Jefferson. I wanted to go back and meet with Thomas Jefferson. That yeah, was in my top five, too. So what, what, why do you think that would be cool to meet with Thomas Jefferson? I think it would be cool because he was, in, in my view, reading history is such a long-term thinker. And most people concede he's an INTP, so it would kind of be like going along with what I'm thinking. But uh, You just, think so? I think he's an ENTP. Really? Everything, everything I've read, they, they, they more class him as INTP. Uh but I could I could kind of see either, but without seeing seeing them and talking to them, how would you ever really know? Well, that's one good reason to go back in time, right? You could find right, out. Right, right, on. right on. The only reason I think ENTP is from his text, just from his prose. It's not based on anything I know about him. Mm. So I could be totally wrong about that because INTP prose and ENTP prose can be fairly indistinguishable if the INTP gets into a gets into a flow. Because the INTPs are much more concise, and Thomas Jefferson is not concise in his writing. I never looked at it that way. That's true. I, I just think he just, I would like to talk to him just because he had such a long-term view, and he saw mainly the reason because it's applicable to today was his dealing with the Barbary Pirates and his dealing with dealings with the Muslim world and, and their, their uh, approach to cultural approach to things and, what and rem, I don't know that culture. I don't know this historical reference that you're talking about can you give us a little bit of the historical background of this I'm not familiar well, with this one in in northern Africa this is what when Adams was president the Barbary pirates northern Africa were robbing and pillaging and, and indentured serving people and all this sort of thing and and there was a lot of debate at the time what people needed to do about it and uh, some people wanted to talk to them a little bit as I understand it and try to try to Board some sort of peace or treaties or that sort of stuff, and Jefferson couldn't quite get his way. He was wanting to go put the foot to him, and and he couldn't do anything about it because he wasn't in power yet. And that was one of the first things he did after he became the president when he sent the fleet over there to put that stuff down. Was where our navy got our history really from, even more so than the Revolutionary War. It was, uh, and he saw that even. It's such a contrast to me because of the humanity and some of the ways he did things with with his influence on Madison and writing the Constitution versus understanding with that culture, they did not understand reason. They wouldn't discuss things. They only understood force and threat of force, and that translated to something that they would they would take action on. You could talk to them nice all day long, but they wouldn't understand anything until you punched them in the mouth. And when he did that, we didn't have any problems. We were able to, we were able to understand. You don't mess with me, and I won't mess with you for 120 years after right. the fact. So that he saw that that far out is very, very interesting to me. That and I think in the last five or ten years, anyway, there's been a real push to kind of marginalize him because he held slaves. That's that's a fact. It's not a bad. It's not a good thing. You know, it's a bad bad part of every human being has a bad part about him and he understood one thing I find distinctive about him is he understood his own hypocrisy in that area right and and how, how did he live with how did he come to that and how did he understand that and how did all that work you know right well I mean I totally feel him actually it's like I feel it like he was he needed the resources he needed the income and shit and he yeah. just was like god damn it I would like to. I would like to make myself. This is another ENTP thing, right? He hated the fact that made him vulnerable, rhetorically. Yeah. <laughs> it, made, it made him rhetorically vulnerable. He hated that. I think that had as much to do with it as anything else, probably. Although I don't know. I've never actually witnessed slavery in action. I'm sure it's quite horrific. But um, 
But, you know, it's like he, he needed, he had a household to run. He had all these people counting on him. He couldn't just be liquidating all his assets all of a sudden. If he sold the slaves, it wouldn't do any good. If he just set them free, then he'd lose however much thousand dollars each one was worth. And, you know, it's like I don't I don't excuse the behavior, but I also see, I to me, it's like you said, he was a human being with his actual human life plus his historical presence life. And we want his historical presence life to be squeaky clean. Well, it kind of is. It's just his human life isn't squeaky clean. Yeah, I don't know that any human's life is squeaky clean, really, when you think about it. We, and it's such a such an interesting thing, and in how and what he must have had to deal with. Because I wonder what I really wonder is: does he did he know or recognize in the long run of things his influence on the founding of our country was such a positive that. I can't say it all sets, you know, but it's it, it was important enough to him to be able to have that freedom of time to do the things that he did. And but at the same time, it's completely shitty the other stuff he was doing. So uh, that dichotomy is, I wouldn't want to live. I wouldn't want to live that. Yeah, I wouldn't want to live it either. I, I I do. I thank him for his powerful words. That I I when I read them, I think, damn, <laughs> this guy's putting a handle on shit. You know, mm -hmm. his rhetoric is just, it, it makes my heart pitter patter. It's so big <laughs> and flowery and yet so powerful. Yeah, and I, I'd always, always interested about what the real, you know, you read, read the letters and things, but some people consider him and Madison like as uh, adversaries in a sense. But it was almost like, cooperation competition at the same time kind of thing that mutual respect of disagreement that I wonder if today the way we look at things today is with regard to relationships between men is different than how much different than it was in his time well you know it's a weird phenomenon of class I think because there was such a class differentiation back then these guys who founded the country were the the landed moneyed gentry, basically. And they they understood there to be a class distinction that was sort of unavoidable. And yet they came at the thing from a fundamentally democratic perspective, some of them with only themselves and their kind in mind, others with the whole populace in mind. And ultimately, because they were arguing in the language of rights and principles, we ended up with an attempt, at least, to constrain government seriously in ways that could provide the people liberty. Yeah, I think they did a good job of that because it lasted very, very structurally sound for about 120 years, anyway, thereabouts. So that that yeah. compared to the other history of man is a pretty damn long run. And I will say it's not it's not a lost cause yet. We can. No, I, no, I don't. I don't think so. We can blow that shit up. We can blow the bullshit up. Yeah. If, That's as it. long as if we get people to think and stop looking at Facebook and and Twitter and and two second sound bites for their news and start start thinking again. That's well, just a difficult problem. They can look at my Facebook page. <laughs> I don't even have Facebook. That's how anti-Facebook I am. Well, it's not it's not cool like YouTube, I'll tell you that. I used to try to put all kinds of shit up on Facebook, and Facebook's fine, but it's not a medium for putting your shit out there is the bottom line. And so I was trying to use it wrong. I like it fine for like um, when my friends have, a, have an event and they invite me to that. That's really useful. I also have my um, TWFP band communication secret group so I can send messages to the band like oh we got practice please bring this cable or whatever so Facebook has lots of uses but what I was trying to use it for is not one of them yeah I think when you compare those two it's kind of probably getting off our topic but uh, Facebook being more textual just is gonna get killed by YouTube videos when it comes to interacting with people you don't know if you know somebody already, you kind of know how to take what they write. 
because because you've you've had personal interaction with them, and but that doesn't carry over so well when you don't know them because all of our you know so much of our communication being nonverbal, and, right. and mannerisms and, and speech and things that face to face just kills it. Well, you yeah, know, I, like, I really love. I like having co voice conversations with people. In text, when I have text conversations with people, I always seem to get myself in trouble. I say something that's interpreted not how I intend it, and someone's mad at me. Mm -hmm. I, I think I it's because they can't voice. read my sarcasm or something. I don't know. I'm sorry to right. interrupt. Continue. No, no, you're fine because I'm, I'm along that same line. I, I just can't do like phone conversations either. Like this I can do because I can I can see you. So that works for me. But text, I know I can't see you, so it's easier for me to adjust. But just voice only has always been rough. It's weird. Mm -hmm. But anyway, I got us way off our topic. No, I, I, I'm sure it was me. You know what? Let's stop this video with Thomas Jefferson being a single topic, and let's do the next person next in a separate video. This one was great. I really enjoyed talking about Thomas Jefferson. He's a personal hero of mine. Yeah.